Yo, how are you doing, folks? Welcome to episode five of the Simple Life Podcast with me, your host, Simba Carter, and as usual, joining me, Mr. Maka MC. I hope you are as well as can be. See, I didn't mention any time of the day this time, so uh, you can't catch me up with that one. <laughs> it's only taken you six episodes, it's but just... we're, get, we're getting there, we're getting there. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, joining us today is one of, uh, well, one of the guys I consider to be an inspiration, to be honest with you. I uh, would like to say his personal friend. And someone that I'm hoping to have on the podcast numerous times as we develop this project, uh, Mr. Mike Wise. Uh, he is a filmmaker, activist, um, and a very notorious individual. Also, I believe currently ranked number seven uh, wakeboarding in the world. Um, very interesting dude. I do hope you all stick around to enjoy the next uh, hour or two of conversations. So, without further ado, throw it over to Mike to introduce himself. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, yeah, Simpa pretty much said it all. Filmmaker, activist, and athlete. And it's actually seventh in the world in wake skating, which differs from wakeboarding in this a little bit. Um, most people have never heard of wake skating. Um, oh, yeah. And so, so I kind of compare it to like wakeboarding is snowboarding on the water because you're strapped in and you have kind of a similar board to a snowboard. So that's a wakeboard. On a wake skate, your board is more like a skateboard without wheels. So you're not strapped into it and you're free to like shove it around and do flip tricks with yeah. it. Um, so it's kind of like skateboarding on the water as opposed to snowboarding. And uh, I skateboarded for many years and still do. Um, so it's it's great for me. I've had two knee surgeries actually, um, two pretty horrendous knee injuries. And so it's much less impact on me and I get to ride on the water um, instead of on the cement. So I, I do it full time pretty much now. That's awesome. Excellent, excellent. excellent. Well, thank you for explaining the difference. I, I must admit I'm ignorant of the subject. I didn't know there was a difference, but I am now gonna go and look into it. Yeah, yeah I'm uh, gonna pull, record this. I'm gonna pull this up now so people can see it. But I, I, like when you said tricks and stuff, oh, sorry, I wanna stick on this point just for a second. Like when flip tricks, is it kind of like, like you would actually transfer skateboard flip tricks it actually that works on the water yeah it's 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 a little different and so i'm actually having some difficulty learning the flip trick part myself but i'm getting them now i'm starting to get them it's uh like because it's a much larger board you're using so to manipulate it around you have to kind of put your feet in different positions but yeah i mean there's guys out there now who are doing like kick flips to to wow. grinds like so Ooh. doing yeah, so well, that's awesome. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> excellent, excellent, man. Um, yeah, guys, do do check it out uh, if you have the opportunity to uh, listening to or watching this. What have you got it? Have you got it? I have it. I have it, and it just played a fucking ad. Uh, <laughs> which, which, so that's the way of the world. We said we'd be ad free. Luckily, and luck, it, luckily nobody can see it. You just heard. You just <laughs> heard Simba being drowned out. <laughs> uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna switch to it now just to have a look uh see so you're gonna the trick uh, you can't see this this is the thing so i'm gonna have to describe it to you and from a guy that has trouble speaking generally <laughs> this isn't gonna be pleasant okay <laughs> oh shit right okay so i'm looking at something like it looks like the cam cambodian cambodia maybe um somewhere in that region or whatever and there's thailand for sure they ride a lot over there yeah and it looks fucking beautiful waterfalls everywhere um oh. trying trying not to get this thing but it looks and i'm gonna skip forward a bit so i can actually see <laughs> this oh okay so they have a sort of a um a sectional um pool sectional pools that are sort of going downwards in a descent and they're like doing what you would what you would attribute sort of traditional skateboarding tricks in between it looks it looks fucking cool it really really does oh, oh so yeah, you man you man's on a rail grind between the two <laughs> is it yeah 
I'm probably getting so all that it, terminology yeah. wrong, so I apologize. If it's oh, no, no, it's hurting your ears, Mike. <laughs> uh, but so yeah. is it is it done uh, the same way as they do sort of wakeboard? So are you pulled sort of is it cable system or can you do it by boat as well? Well, boat and cable are the traditional ways of doing it. Um, of course, jet skis a uh, nice alternative because you don't need to go so high. Um, but um, the another cool thing people are doing out there is called winching. So like kind of similar to a car winch that you would have to pull your car out of a out of a mud or something. Um, they have a winch made specifically for wake skating or wakeboarding also. Uh, I think they even use it for snowboarding nowadays, but it goes, it operates at a higher speed. So it'll pull, it'll pull the winch at like 30 kilometers per hour. So you can go anywhere. There's like, I don't know, a third of a meter of water you can ride on this. So people ride on, on fountains and all sorts of crazy things wow. um, when like, they have these. Winches. It's like an eternal skid. Do you know that kind of way when you skim, a skim a stone across your, you ever see those? Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, it's really, really cool. It's a, it's a, w when was this invented? Do you know? Because I haven't seen this at all. Um, well, it's super unknown. It, I, it got popular in the United States uh, around 2010, I would say, was right, probably... So it's young. It's, it's in its infancy. Yeah, but it kind of died out, I think, in the U.S. And then so here in Europe, it's kind of this starting its peak, I think. Um, and there's not many people doing it, but the people that are doing it are, are definitely representing. There, there's some real good riders out there. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. I'm definitely going to have to try that and fail miserably. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, there's, yeah. a lot, there's a big scene in the uk for it yeah there's, there's a few companies a... that make the wake skates actually yeah. nice good good to see the uk being represented yeah. um so let's get on with some of the traditional formatted questions then <laughs> um i suppose for a lot of people one maybe you know who you are or um have a clue sort of as to what you you've done so i suppose could you give us an, an overview of sort of when why and i guess how you got involved in in the cannabis industry um yeah i actually come from a political family um my father was a, in the legislature uh in texas and so i moved to colorado and in colorado i became active in kind of cannabis legislation and so I'd frequently go to the Capitol and, um, you know, whatever they're voting on, I'd go and speak on it, whether I was for it or against it and, um, played a big part in organizing, um, getting the public aware of issues to get behind or not get behind, um, getting the public aware of what's going on behind closed doors. There's a lot of, shady deals and uh, things going on in Colorado. And actually, when I was there in Colorado, we learned that um, all the politicians from Colorado hosted meetings with the politicians from other states. And so the other states learned how to restrict cannabis rights successfully by coming to Colorado and learning from the politicians in, in Colorado what they, they did successfully and had failures with. Um, and so that's kind of what got me into cannabis activism. The reason I've always been a consumer of cannabis and a patient, which I just learned kind of through this whole journey of filmmaking and making some movies about cannabis. And um, in this process, I learned about cannabis oil and specifically high THC oils and use these to cure myself of a, new, a number of conditions. Um, and so for that reason, I really, you know, I really support cannabis. You know, I'm I'm here for cannabis. I'm not here. I'm not here because I have a business. I'm not here because I have a show. Or you know, I'm not here to try to get popular. There's a lot of different motives people have out there. I'm here because cannabis gave me my life back, and so I just want other people to know about it. So, um, in Colorado. Um, when I first found out about high THC cannabis oil and used it to cure myself, specifically of Crohn's disease, I started telling everybody I knew and I had a popular social media. So I was telling people publicly, hey, this stuff works. And, you know, so it's pretty much immediately as soon as I started saying that everybody wanted it. 
because they had a problem or their mother had a serious disease or their sister had cancer or their brother had, you know, COPD or is always, there was something, something always going on. And so when I, so I made it for myself when I, when I first um, found out I should start trying it, I didn't buy it in a store. I made the oil myself and um, I use it from videos from Rick Simpson. Um, the only thing I did differently was change the solvent because that was a huge taboo thing um, in the US. So I used uh, like ethanol and um, I was making it for free. I mean, I was just telling people, hey, if you bring me all the materials, you bring me the solvent, you know, whatever I need to make it, it takes me eight, 12, 16, 24 hours. Um, I'll do this for free. Don't pay me for my time or my labor. Just bring me the stuff, you know? Yeah. And so that also um, helped, you know, in retrospect, that kind of got my name out there a lot because nobody was really doing this. Um, everybody wanted something. Um, so um, I was inspired by Rick cool once as soon as I heard about his story and um, uh, Rick Simpson. And so eventually, I guess, come to the modern day, I, through the course of making a film in Colorado called Illegally Alive, which you can watch for free on YouTube, I was able to get in contact with Rick Simpson personally and was able to meet him and interview him and talk to him about anything I needed to, you know, all the questions, fill in the gaps I had with making the oil. Um, I came back to the U.S. I made a video on how to make it, kind of an updated video that I would think fills in the gaps. You know, that as a as a avid viewer myself, what I didn't know and what needed more explaining, yeah. I made kind of my version of that video. Um, just trying to get everyone to to do this, you know, grow this plant, um, and you know, make this themselves. And so today, I'm more focused on this that end of of getting the information out there and providing it directly as opposed to spending hours and hours waiting for legislation to come up in the, in the Capitol and to speak about it. Um, and so I could go into any of those things and I could go on forever. Um, but, you know, we, we made a, if you want to go back on anything I talked about, feel free to let me know. Um, but yeah, so I made the, a new film kind of about how my whole journey happened, how I healed myself with cannabis, how I met Rick Simpson. And then this one is also available for free on YouTube. And this premiered this last weekend. I think it was on Saturday night at the London Cannabis Film Festival. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, I do remember us talking last year and wanting to get uh, Illegally Alive in to last year's festival. So I'm, I'm really pleased that um, you managed to get it submitted for this year. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a shame that the, the event was online, obviously, because of everything that's going on. Um, but I, I do hope that people will make them available. We'll obviously share the links to both uh, of your documentaries in the bio of this uh, across all platforms. Um, we are supposed to touch on a good subject there. Obviously, a lot of people know can high strength THC cannabis oil as Rick Simpson oil. Um, so, could you sort of tell us a bit more about um, how you met Rick and sort of your your relationship with him? Yeah, um, I first met him. I stayed with him um, for two weeks over Thanksgiving weekend or Thanksgiving, you know, that time in 2016. Um, so I flew from Colorado Springs where I was living at the time to Croatia. And, um, <clears throat> and this trip really, in retrospect, it radicalized me to step away from the traditional sense of, of what an activist is thought of in the United States when it comes to cannabis. You think of an activist, you think of somebody who's trying to get reform um, pushed in the legislature. <clears throat> um, Rick kind of helped to open my eyes. I mean, I knew that all this stuff was happening, but I didn't really like, no one was ever really like, like cementing everything down and, and pushing these ideas 
on me consistently. You know, I had this hat of myself and they were loosely connected and I didn't tie them all together. And so he helped to kind of really help me realize that, in you know, in my opinion, that what we're trying to do today, um, people have spent hun- hundreds of thousands of hours at this point trying to do the exact same thing for decades. Um, what we're doing is not new. It's um, many people... You know, and of course, everything I'm speaking is from my opinion and in my experience, but many people believe that, um, believe politicians and doctors, you know, and scientists, we can put them all in the same category. Um, When it comes to cannabis, they consistently uh, tell us more research needs to be done. They consistently tell us we don't know if it's harmful. They consistently tell us we don't know enough about it to make it legal or to prescribe it or to, they, 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 People believe this so-called ignorance that that these people in positions of power um, claim to have about cannabis. And one, I think if you're if you're if you're in that position of power, you shouldn't be ignorant, you know, on any subject really, when it comes down to it. But um, but um, in my opinion, this is just a guise. This is just uh, this is what they're paid to say, you know, essentially. Yeah. to um to keep the public at bay to keep the public from pushing them further and it's been what's and they use they do this because it works um yeah you're right it, yeah um and so I get, let me get back to i guess your question uh, um so um rick kind of helped me help me realize all of this and radicalize me further <clears throat> And so I went back to the United States. And, well, when I was there in Croatia, you know, I already had a very anti-status, very anti-establishment, very um, what people would consider kind of radical outlook to politics. And so um, <laughs> I told, I expressed my frustrations with the United States government with him during this time as well. And he kind of just said, hey, well, why don't you just come over and live with me? And, um, and so I was like, you know what, I was like, yeah, I'll do this. You know, I'm not joking. I will. I liked Croatia. It was nice. Um, and I was sick of the U S I've been sick and I, I needed an excuse to leave. I've been wanting to leave. I hate, um, the imperialistic policies, um, corporate driven, you know, money over people mentality that the United States government employs in pretty much every aspect of their policies. And so I went back to the United States and sold everything I owned or left it with my parents. Um, And I guess it was six months later, around June of 2017, I moved to Croatia. And so we're staying a few miles away. Um, So, you know, I'm not living in his house, (laughs) but um, we're there um, pretty close to each other. We see each other quite frequently. And um, we do a few shows where we kind of just talk about the issues and, and we really hit upon most of the, the things, in my opinion, that needed to be discussed regarding cannabis, which is why I haven't really done a new show since, because I feel like I end up talking about the same things over and over. Because. Um, but that's a whole nother <laughs> subject. No, no, no. Wait, I get you. I get you. <laughs> you know, there's a certain. It's it's what is it Einstein or is it, it falsely attributed to Einstein where <clears throat> you do the same thing over and over and expect different results? It's the definition of insanity or something like yeah. that. I'll probably butcher yeah. that, but <clears throat> you know, the same thing applies here. If you're just repeating it and just take a fucking break from it, man. You know what I mean? Give yourself some fucking headspace to to get yourself right and come back at it. Restrategize. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm everyone, all the movers and shakers, you know, as you would put it, are friends with me. And we, we, we smoked and hung out at all the events, you know, in Colorado. And so a lot of people in Europe specifically would be like, dude, you're crazy to want to leave that, to come here to a place where it's not legal. But, um, I have, I've, I've become disillusioned with the entire industry. So it wasn't hard for me to leave. Yeah. Well, I can see that 
you're similar to me in terms of the the ethics that you aspire and the vision you have for what the access that we should have for this is not what they have sought to to create and i think that it's it's fortuitous to europe as a continent for us to have you you around because you've seen the legislation and the moves firsthand we're now a victim to it in the uk where the same people that that created and are still creating these slightly variant decriminalization and legalization models in various states in america oppressing our politicians so that they can get a legalized system that purely and entirely profits them i mean obviously you have the campaign of uh, patience over profit and that is entirely what is the mentality now they've seen the billions that can be made on this they've seen when they create and float on the stock market what yeah. what they can what they can do so that's their end game with this and it's what you said before about the paid ignorance of professionals now and they're saying we need more research i mean when when keith stroop started normal in what 76 uh, he attributed saying there was 20,000 documents available already on cannabis. It was one of the most studied um, botanical su subjects out there. And then you've considered the research since, since we've cracked the endocannabinoid system and understood cannabinoids. It's, yeah, it's for any one of these professionals or experts to still be ignorant on this subject when, frankly, a layman like you or I, to speak in general terms, knows far more than they do through direct experience and through yeah. speaking to the people that... Um, have lived this, you know what I mean? They've grown plants, they've extracted oils, they've treated themselves, they've treated others. And I think without that lived experience, uh, any form of legalization is entirely disingenuous. So I, I wouldn't be one of those people that say you're, you're a fool for leaving it all. I'd say you're, you're smart. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's sad, but it's true what you said. It's like, all you have to do is be able to read a graph. And all these people, they wanna keep it from children and they wanna do more research on it for what, you know? Any statistician, statistician who keeps track on substance deaths annually or per any time period, <laughs> you don't need a degree or a diploma or research or a study to, to show you that there, there are no deaths from cannabis use. So what are we, you know, there's, what are we protecting? What are we protecting the children from? What are we needing research on, you know, that it's too dangerous to let the public have? Because that's, that's the underlying message that they're, they're sending and it's it's frankly it's absurd and so <laughs> I, get, I get i try not to get frustrated when talking about it but it, it it's frustrating and it's like the same people who created the propaganda originally which we now kind of see as silly you know are the same families and companies that are creating the propaganda today that are still saying that it causes psychosis and that it's that it's you know habit forming or bad on the brain or kills brain cells, whatever they say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the, anybody who can use Google can, can easily find out the truth behind any of these statements. And, and uh, like you said, there's so much money. They're just trying to keep their grip on it at any cost. And my problem is the cost is real human lives. And yeah. so, so it's a very actually serious offense, um, you know, to what they're doing when you want to get, get into it. But that's kind of the road that I try not to go down, especially on these shows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, it reminds me of, um, I often attribute uh, a lot of things to the Simpsons or rather use analogies from the Simpsons. So I'm thinking of the Reverend's wife going, won't somebody please think of the children? <laughs> and it's that moralizing argument, that one statement you can't really argue against because who doesn't want to protect children? So it, mm -hmm. it engages that cognitive bias and dissonance in our head. But to me, it's they're just perpetuating this so that they can profit from it. Look at there's a, a pharmaceutical company in the US just got FDA approval for a cocaine based nasal spray called uh, Numbrino of all the names, Numbrino. <laughs> um, and cocaine, obviously, as we know, attribute, highly attributable to a lot, of, a lot of deaths but is still schedule two in America, whereas cannabis is schedule one. And the only reason that is, is to restrict research on it. There's, there's some interesting, yeah, there's some interesting things starting to, that me and a few others are noticing about the UK with most of our growth licenses, the cultivation licenses from the home office are to universities. Some of these universities are partnering with police forces to, to map the, the street weed as it were. 
where's all that information then going back by the university it ends up at the hands of pharmaceutical companies that then all of a sudden can press the FDA or whoever to go, oh, that's a dangerous street weed, but this synthetic drug version that we've created that has this long list of side effects is safe for the kids. It's, it's just, it's a, it's a bullshit misdirection. That's all it is. And they've, they've got good to it over a hundred years. I've just started rolling again, just so you know. Not the good kind, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, so a bit of a technical issue there. I apologize. That was my call on this this time around. Um, basically, the audio drifted out maybe about 10 minutes in if you're watching this. And I started panicking. You, you could probably track my phrases and expressions going, Mm -hmm. shit <laughs> i've got to wait for an opportune time to actually interrupt so that, you know you know i'm not going to break the audio for the for the pod uh the podcast the audio side of things at least so apologies for that i'm sure you're going to see the dun 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 dun, dun, dun. <laughs> but yeah okay still the apprentice yeah. I'll, I'll get there i'll get there it's, oh. it's a learn it's a learning curve but we're getting there but I, I appreciate you stopping it now and i'm sure it's I'll COVID. As well as well <laughs> just blame yeah COVID. exactly blame, blame pandemic my camera just cut out. Oh, shit. <laughs> what do you got? What do you got? Distillate. Very nice. Distillate. Yeah. How, how are you finding um, procurement in, in Poland? <clears throat> um, it's nice to be connected. <laughs> it's nice that Always. people know me. <laughs> people know me <laughs> all over the world. And it's funny to say that, but really, um, people will message me and they'll be like, oh, dude, you're, you're here in near me i want to come visit you and meet you for a coffee or something mm -hmm. and it'll be a lot of times it'll be a grower and they always want me to like they want me to test their stuff but you know they show it to me and like give me some and i'm like oh this is awesome can i buy more like two ounces <laughs> <laughs> what, what's uh what's the lo the laws like yeah. out in Poland these days um you know, i never keep track but um I'm, <laughs> it's probably pretty illegal <laughs> Yeah. I think it's like, uh, I think they allow up to 1%. It's either 0.3 or up to 1% of hemp, of uh, THC in plants grown in the ground. And there's actually a pretty thriving hemp um, industry uh, that's been going on here in Poland the last few years. I've been coming here for two, maybe two and a half, three years uh, for expos. And so I've gotten to meet actually a lot of people over the years. And um, I got to say, they're doing things pretty well over here. They're keeping prices down. Um, so in terms of industry, it's pretty awesome. But um, the legislation still has light years to come. Hmm. Is there much of a... So in the UK, we have quite a, either a perceived or an actual divide between sort of hemp and CBD and raw cannabis, as it were. Is, is the same true over, um, over there? I don't think so. Um, at least not yet. So the the expos that you sort you speak at and you attend, uh, what's their sort of the policy on it? Because in the UK they try to either avoid the word cannabis or they actively advertise that we're not THC. You know, they're trying to move themselves from that perception of uh, the dangerous perceived dangers of cannabis. Yeah, I think almost. I think almost every company does that here as well they're uh, i think they do thc free mostly um <laughs> thc free it sounds like a soda doesn't it <laughs> so, fucking hell diet thc every time i hear it too i'm like where's this thc you guys took out dude like i'll take it like, if you're not using that then you know what? <laughs> just to sort of add, add to that I always wondered what um, Coca Cola did with the de coconut. They have the de cocainized part of the coca plant, right? So that they use their stuff. What happened to the rest of it? Where is it? <laughs> the, actually, the, <laughs> there is an interesting thing here, guys. Okay, actually, knock on my door now. It's no, there, there, there is a link between this. I am sure there is. Uh, I remember reading this a few years ago. I may butcher this, but honestly give this a look and we'll research this for the next uh, podcast. <laughs> but I, I am sure that Coca-Cola are partnered with a pharmaceutical company, some, somebody that uses um, the extracted sodium chloride cocaine because it's they, they just use the leaves as it, it, where it's processed and it's similar to trichomes on cannabis, I believe. Right. 
um, and then you pro you can process it off that way. And I, I am sure I am sure that there is a, there is some link out there. I can't pull it out of the recesses of my mind, but I'm sure there is a link there. There goes the my conspiracy tinfoil hat hot take that <laughs> Coca Cola was actually the biggest cocaine dealer in the whole world. But <laughs> maybe behind the U.S. government, but that's that's probably a different subject for a different Ooh. time. <laughs> well, it reminds me of Dana Larson, the activist in Canada, mm. who um, I guess he got kind of tired of cannabis activism, also, and he has dispensaries um, for cannabis, and so he just I want to say like a few months ago opened the first Coca Coca Cafe, um, wow. in uh, somewhere in Canada. Um, and so when I met him, he was he was talking about this, about the coca plant a lot. And he gave me these like little candies that he made out of coca. And so it's not like cocaine, but it's made from the plant. And yeah. it like, and that's what he sells in, in the store. Um, the drinks made from coca. And like, I got super crazy energy buzzed from it. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was a crazy thing. Well, it's it's quite quite useful, quite medicinal in a lot of prop, uh, prop, uh, in a lot of ways, and has a lot of medicinal properties. Obviously, that's why I think the UK and the US are both scheduled as uh, schedule two. So, mm. having a high propensity for abuse, but having a legitimate medical use. Obviously, in places like Peru and Colombia, it's the residents consume it to treat al uh, altitude sickness. Um, it helps it regularly. I'm not sure if it's to do with blood pressure or what it is that it that it does, but it ties it, into vessels for sure. Yeah. And I think that um, the, the cultural use of that is actually protected. And that's sort of analogous to say smoking opium to where we're at now with synthetic uh, opioids. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's what the difference is between what we're sniffing in the West compared <laughs> to what, what you're consuming on the leaves. So, so I very much welcome this because it's, it's just another step towards the, the normalization of um, what people are going to choose to do anyway. And the more we can bring it into the public eye, we can, we can have these conversations and we can seek to um, we'll just welcome everyone back into society. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's no difference I, I see than us being cannabis consumers here this evening than if three guys want to sit around and have doing a cocaine yeah. podcast or whatever. It's, there's, there's there, seems there, is, there is no difference. There seems to be a pattern though, doesn't there? It's like, oh, you want to, you want it in the public eye in a cafe in its natural form, so on the plant. Hmm, where have I heard that before? <laughs> you know, do you know what I mean? It's like, hmm, oh, yeah. fucking yeah. hell. But well, it's, uh, the, it's the medicinalization we're seeing of a lot of things. Like we've just said about Numbrino, um, Johnson and Johnson. You know, no more tears. They got FDA approval for a ketamine nasal spray called uh, a sketamine, I believe. Uh, again, again, who's naming these fucking Fuck things, up. right? Uh, no, you are get, a <laughs> <laughs> um, So the, the same is happening now with psilocybin. Oregon just voted to decriminalize all drugs and legalize assisted and non-assisted uh, uh, psilocybin therapy. So again, big, big steps are sort of being made. I mean, there are cultures around the world that protect most of the, uh, let's call them old world drugs, you know, the natural formed substances. There's a lot of cities, in fact, I believe there's one in your native Texas that have decriminalized or looking to decriminalize natural psychedelics as well. Um, so there are regions, the start, yeah, probably, I think, I think it is actually, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the, the, there's a lot of places looking to sort of do this more and more. And my fear is, I think we've already spoke of this, Mark, on a previous show, is that the companies that have then seen the money in cannabis and then going, okay, ooh, all we have to do is go make the medical campaign, AstroTurf, the grassroots campaign, so they do most of the work for yeah. us. We get into chambers, write the legislation, give a few backhanded checks and a promise of some positions on boards, and outrolls the system. What do you mean? It's well, identifying things that work before. and then just recycling them over and over. And you can see that on both sides. Exactly. You can see that, you know, you can see it on people that are fighting against it. They're just... As, as Mike said, they're just rehashing the same things that are proven to be effective. And we're still doing the same fucking thing and expecting yeah. different results. So that's what needs to change, isn't it? Our approach to that and to actually dismantle those tools that, that are proven to be effective. But how do we fucking do that? Don't know. Oh, it's crazy. I think ed education, I think. So your approach, Mike, as you said before about like, Education. Ha having that revelation of 
there's an activist where you can help sort of one on one and you're one on one and it's very time consuming and it's it is very taxing emotionally mentally because you get to know people very intimately and cannabis is a wonderful substance but it's not a panacea it doesn't help everybody all the time it can help alleviate a lot of things but there are some people that it's just not going to really do it'll give them better days but it's it's not going to give them better longer years as it were you know and i think I, I kind of went down the similar route for a while and was helping anybody and everybody that would come to me and I just burnt out doing it. And so this is why we've sort of we've restructured and repackaged as a platform of education that uses sort of entertainment to Trojan horse in some information so that people can, um, mm-hmm. can really be informed on this and start having those conversations, especially outside of our own little algorithmic bubbles that we're all getting sort of stuck in. I mean, you'll see, obviously maybe not on the continent because I don't have the experience of it, but in the UK, most of the expos are stacked with most of the same people. Oh, oh. and he's gone. I, mm-hmm. We're fucking riddled with technical issues. You know, I should have put out a P, uh, PSA at the fucking start of this and just, you know, read people their fucking, their rights. <laughs> 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 but uh, he might have to actually put that fucking thing in the freezer. So we, we'll, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what the story <laughs> is with it. But um, yeah, so, so I mean, I've, have you got a new strategy in your head then or some have you got a new direction that you're thinking about going or are you still sort of processing it's always tough it's always tough and i guess so right now i'm probably still would be considered that i'm in the contemplation phase of what to what to really do next um because uh, it's like what simple was saying it's um education i think is the key because that's kind of the only tool we have, um, you know, <laughs> the only reasonable, logical, nonviolent tool we have to use is education and to fight back against the the propaganda campaigns that, that have been going on for 80 plus years and are still going on today, brand new ones. Um, and so the toughest part for me is, um, is financial, you know, yeah we're we're competing against you know i don't know who's in the cannabis space but you know kind of like joe rogan podcast and (laughs) and, uh, these other people we're competing against in reality and um they have tons of of money being poured into into these uh these shows that are going on and so it's it's tough for me because i like I mentioned earlier, I know a lot of the people, I mean, especially in, in the Colorado area, you know, all the publishers of the magazines and the, you know, the, yeah. the dispensary owners. And, and there is, and I don't want to paint it completely as a bad picture because there is some good apples. Um, but like, you know, as a whole, it's a, they, they all hang out together. And in my opinion, these people have a vested interest in keeping this type of message that we're talking about out of the mainstream. Um, so it's it makes it even harder to get any sort of um, help in the in the traditional sense, where a show, you know, like like ours would get popular would yep. be by having lots of money and and having advertising or investors and whatnot yeah Yeah. i get you i get you so i mean you've got to dispense with the traditional approach then so yeah what we have to do sorry go ahead go ahead all all i was going to say is then we just have to identify what tools (laughs) are available to us i just spat there in my hand sorry about that um well we got to like stuff like um things like tiktok Right. Go with me here because I'm spitballing. Right. But the governments are afraid of this thing. It's kids oh, yeah. making fucking funny videos. And it just so happens that it's sourced in, it, 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 it's in China. Right. But but here's the thing. If they're afraid of that, that's what needs to be used. Because here's the thing. They don't they have limited uh, in, information and we can catch up. All we need to do really is be transparent in the direction. And because 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 we're working with with with, um, let's say, um, a reduced number of people that 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 would be sort of non-capitalist minded right so it's the pot is the pot is everybody but we have this do you know what i mean and here's the thing people are wary about which way to, to go and rightly fucking so because there's so much fracturing within our communities right so oh, yeah. so 
we've got it exactly we've got to sit the fuck down and get our heads clear and agree on just a, a simple direction right and then collectively use these like social media weapons or weapons like weapons um <laughs> But in, in, in such a way, with small, with small investment and stuff like that, you can actually, you can, you know, put the branches out, so to speak. You, we can grow this way. Instead of going up the traditional routes, we, we can actually get the viral, um, not viral, get the, the, the influencers that are on social media to actually take fucking stock here and realize that, you know, this is their future as well. And it is it is a solution to, to an awful lot of the bullshit rhetoric that we see on a daily basis from, you know, every fucking government that, you know, that is just interested in maintaining their position, no matter what we're talking about. So, yeah. do you know what I mean? If we actually offer this up as a viable solution that's obviously fun and involved and very community-based, like we have been discussing on this, on this podcast, then as... We can go laterally, not fucking. Do you know what I mean? We can go around this bullshit, but it just yeah. it, we just need social cohesion. Oh, That's yeah. what we need to fucking do. It know. is tough, but if we could get that, we could really it could really help because that <laughs> numbers is, is is what we got. You know, numbers yeah. is the one thing we got over them. If we don't have the money, we have the numbers. We have the people. We have the eyeballs, <laughs> yeah. and so and so social media is like a super great way. Memes, memes are. Uh, People make fun of it, but memes are like so popular. Yeah, identifiable and, very quickly. So. Oh yeah, I mean, so I what I kind of do is uh, I try to to kind of use the viral aspect, it, you know, where it's still it's not exploiting anything or like yeah no, no, no. Say, you know? yeah yeah you're not yeah. you're not stepping on anybody is that what you're trying to say yeah just like practical vid- mainly the only viral type of videos i put up is uh like patients who are, who you know the ones that really go popular are like the the seizures um parkinson's um videos where you can see somebody who take who's, who's visibly shaking from one of these serious diseases yeah. and then takes cannabis and immediately stops um, you know, whereas like other cannabis pages will put people like dabbing from their nose, you know, or yes. something and they put like 20 of these videos per day. Yes. You know? and, that, um, and that is, that is fine too. It has its place, but it can't, it can't command it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, so like I've, I've tried to completely avoid that and just go like as viral as I can. Like within my within my moral boundaries, um, but like if we could get together some people, really, I could. I mean, I I have no problem showing showing them how how I did it and and what I do to to make my page popular. And I know if you do it with more kind of outrageous type of content, that the uh, the kind of method I've applied will work. Uh, you know, and we can have pepper in some actual real information in there. And, uh, <laughs> you know, that, that's, that's what I see though, is this using social media to get the message out. Go ahead, well, Simba. You're mad to get in there. Go on, <laughs> fucking hell. I'm fighting, fighting. <laughs> no, he's, uh, back. Right. he's back. I didn't know you were here. I couldn't see you. <laughs> uh, I was like, geez, Simba's been gone for quite a while. <laughs> I actually figured out, right. So when my camera resets, Mac, it remind me in future to check down a click to rejoin. It's not a hard way. It then becomes software, so I can join faster. Nice one. Um, I was thinking. I was thinking as you were talking before. It's so a bunch of people in a hall all shouting. The sound becomes cacophonous. It becomes distorted. You can't hear the message. Yet you give them all a hymn sheet. They start singing. It becomes rhythmic, orchestral. The the sound flows, and it's easy to interpret and understand. And I think that's the main thing that the establishment, the uh, institution, as it were, that's set to benefit from this, you know, the big, big farmer, uh, big agriculture, et cetera, that are going to weaponize the best parts of this while limiting the most beneficial parts for the overall society. <clears throat> I think that we need that cohesion. And I think that I, the other idea that I got as you were talking there was we need to be more international. It doesn't really help us all picking at little bits here and there in our own sort of regional areas when the idea of this is all underpinned 
by by fraud, by racism, by really sort of draconian and antiquated thinking. So I'm thinking of Seed Our Future, for example, who are a campaign trying to get um, the UK government, as it were, currently, to challenge the UN's conventions because they don't stand on, they're in violation of our human rights on the international level. Then on a countrywide level, it, they violate so many different laws. They've managed to articulate this and produce a report that is seemingly now to be quite effective in several courtrooms in getting dismissals of cases because it's showing that when the Crown Prosecution Service in the UK can't show evidence for the scheduling of cannabis, it, then they can't be prosecuted for the crime. So rather than us following the Canadian or the Colorado and Washington model, which were the two first horses out of the gate in America, and then legalizing this, we go back a step and we get rid of all the bullshit that has imprisoned us, all of these fraudulent conventions and all of this crap that, I mean, you yourself have been a victim to, like DUI charges for possession when driving, you know what I mean? The the over-possession over charges like that they've got in Canada now, um, the seed restrictions they're seeking to to uh, put in Canada so that you have to grow predetermined genetics. Oh yeah, <laughs> from the government. <laughs> yeah. Probably GMO. <laughs> well, exactly that. You've got to then think of the private companies that are then going to profit from this. I mean, this is one thing that COVID has shown us in the UK is that modern neoliberalistic capitalism is just a boys club. I mean that in the sense of not uh, gender exclusive there. I well, mean in the sense of it's a club. <laughs> Even in the sense. Well, yeah, I suppose <laughs> women, women, women typically have a, a tendency to be a bit more compassionate or acceptability to show that. Men uh, are pricks. Let's just get right, that out there, right there, right there, <laughs> right? We're all dickheads. That's it. Done. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> Sorry. It's good, though. it's good what you're saying, because, you know, part of activism is fighting it in the courts and fighting it in the streets. Fighting it any chance you get, you know? Um, and I guess that's the overall message, is to just always keep talking about it and keep, keep trying to... Um, fight for this so to, to, um, so, sorry it's all tied in. <clears throat> yeah do you mind if i jump in a second yeah. no i was just gonna say because it's all tied in oh right it's sorry. all you know it's all <laughs> tied into the other problems we're having no no you're 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 100 percent right you're 100 percent right um before we get into that though just to sort of build on what both of you were saying one i might have lost the second one one is have we ever got have we gotten to a point where um we're seeing seeds, Monsanto-esque seeds that don't reproduce in cannabis. Are we seeing that now or, or has that yet to come? Not on the commercial market that I'm aware of. So that's yet to come. Once we get there, we're <laughs> fucked. Fuck well, me. Monsanto just... seeds that don't reproduce? What do you mean by that? Well, there is, there is. I think Maka is alluding to something that has been spoken on the internet quite a lot. Monsanto vehemently denied this, but it is the Terminator Seed Project, I believe it That's was correct. titled. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. the trying to create food stocks and grains that then don't, don't allow for for cuttings, then don't self pollinate. Oh, um, interesting. So you would have to. Buy I, I wouldn't put it past operation. them. To, yeah, they've tried everything else, including poisoning people. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know that, that that was linked to an awful lot of like mass suicides, as far as I know, in India. Now, obviously, I'm spitballing here. I'm going to look that up. Please don't take my word for it. Um, but that's that I remember in the back of my mind is something like that. You can imagine, um, even in the states now, you know, an awful lot of farmers and stuff that would be reliant, and it would crush them if that if that was to be in introduced. But um, just the other thing was um, when you say about being international, Simba. Right. Um, one thing is like I see an awful lot of um, Canadian and American uh, news that comes in and the majority of it is either another state has legalized recreational or, or medical cannabis or, you know, very sort of outrageous clips and content like you were saying, Mike, um, that is sort of very sensational. And I'm here to sort of build, look at me, I can dab from my nose and all of this stuff. And the, the, the sort of a combination of that makes me not care. Now, I don't mean that offensively. What I mean is subliminally, I switch off because I'm not, I'm not in that situation. I'm not here. I'm not, it's not positive. It, 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 do you know what I mean? It, I'm sort of semi-jealous. So what I'm thinking is if we're going to be international, maybe our, our, our connection should be with other, more so with other countries that are fighting prohibition in the same way and sort of having 
having their sort of fight as a spotlight instead of the sensationalized, outrageous dab from your nose shit. Do you know what I mean? Maybe if we refocus yeah. on that, we can unify a bit better. Sorry, I've I got verbal diarrhea tonight. No, that was no. That's a very good point, and I I think yeah, I often get lost in the idea that we need sort of uh, people like Mike and that that have lived through and helped fight in some way. Uh, that ends up in a backhanded way, creating the system that we now have to oppose ourselves. This is something I've spoke of quite a lot in the past that I'm probably going to be in the position from next year of fighting against legalization in this country because the laws that they will create um, will cause more harm. They will have more power to do more harm and they will do it because they will seek to gentrify and uh, cleanse the cannabis community and industry so that mm. it is the appearance they want. So yeah, unfortunately, I agree we see far too much of this content of sensational dabs of people hotboxing and putting like a pound in a, a, a modified leaf blower with a blowtorch that sort of shit which yeah fun it happens we all do whatever but it doesn't help the message it's fun to the community that accepts that oh that's not any harm but somebody that thinks that one marijuana cigarette is going to cause their son to kill themselves and they see a pound of it you, you know what i mean they're gonna it's gonna blow, blow their minds yeah. so it's i, I think that yeah, getting countries like New Zealand prior to them moving towards their referendum, highlighting that more in the other countries to go, this is what we've done to get to this position. This is the kind of opposition we're facing because it's the same opposition worldwide. Yeah. It's big, big pharma, big, agriculture, big, big energy that, <clears throat> that are then paying for the lobbyists and they're studying everything. Look yeah. at Shell now. Shell are basically trying to rebrand themselves as an energy company rather than a petroleum one. So there's companies like that that are looking into cannabis uh, supercapacitors, you know, graphene celled uh, supercapacitor batteries. So they're very quietly on one side of it. I, I can imagine I haven't got any evidence of this, but it's good speculation yeah. that th that industry would then stop any research and development on th this kind of thing. Because then if you could grow your own super celled batteries, which is basically the, the technology we're looking at here, it's not that sophisticated at all at all there's a uh, robert murray smith guys check out robert murray smith on youtube this guy makes all sorts of homemade stuff he does an amazing amount with uh, cannabis based batteries. bioplastics as well and fucking, yeah. was it graphic graphene based um uh hemp batteries is that right if i got that yeah right? we, it's it's just it's i don't know if you can see it's the stuff that's on the shelf there it's just nah. comp composite <laughs> cannabis i can't even point in the right direction Get the binoculars out loud that one <laughs> <That's nice. laughs> yeah so it's just it's it's the white in a husk from the so you still get the fibrous material from the ex external yeah you still then get the the cannabinoids you can still then get seed oil you then still get the roots you know it's it's such a versatile multifaceted plant that in most places i actually made a farmer weep in California when I was out there doing my road trip and we stood on a second uh, floor drying rack facility on a stairwell and I pointed to this thing, what the hell is that? And he went, that's our compost heap. And it was a mountain, a mountain, tons of stalk. And I went, have you ever heard of graphene? Have you ever heard it? And started talking about a few things and his jaw hit the floor and he went, mate, it's illegal for us to touch that. If I wanted to process that, I'd have to get an industrial license. I'm a cultivator of flowers. I'm only yeah. licensed to pro. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That li those little things, the nuance that they've built into the system of legalization compartmentalizes yeah. it so that we're wasting the potential. So then in, I saw the other day in a Navajo tribe, there was a quarter of a million plants uh, were destroyed. And it's again, why destroy it? Just because it's got too much THC doesn't mean it's useless. It doesn't mean it's, it's bad plant. It's bad policy, not bad cultivation. Yeah, you could ship it to another state and it'd be <laughs> usable, but that's probably someone didn't pay off somebody. <laughs> and, well, yeah, that's it's crazy because, uh, you know, it, Native American land is sacred, you know, co covered by treaties and, and <laughs> U.S. government or any law enforcement agency is not supposed to be allowed to be to go on there for any reason whatsoever. Yeah, well, we saw that with the... Uh what was the pipeline they weren't supposed to be doing any of that either but it's i mean i mean we could sit here and talk for hours hours on what america shouldn't shouldn't be doing but it's currently doing we talked about the syrian pipeline there no no the no. um i can't think that was fucked up too but is, that, is it standing rock was it standing rock oh pipeline? right yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes um yeah and the they had the fbi oh, yeah, and, and national guard which they've built and has already exploded <laughs> yep yeah 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 it's it's Fucking moronic, and that's for a resource that again we don't need because cannabis can produce that ethanol. Ethanol burns five times that's cleaner. What I was going to say earlier, yeah, yeah. So it's, again, it's as you alluded to before, Mike, that 
cannabis solves so many goddamn problems and majority i'm sorry to to break this to anybody but quite frankly the majority of the issues that we deal with in the modern world whether it be climate change wealth inequality dependency on fossil fuels you know the acidification yeah. of waterways all of these things are a consequence of, of cannabis prohibition because if we'd have had the opportunity to evolve with the technology and and the um at the rate that we would have if it was legal we'd be 20 30 40 50 years ahead at this point but you know, you know what? <clears throat> this is this is a very subtle one as well that I, that I sort of had to I had to look up, and I wasn't I wasn't surprised when I found out. But do you know stevia? The sweetener. Yeah, you know yeah. that's controlled and licensed. You have to have a license for that as well. You can't just grow that down your down your. I wonder why that is. So you don't have to be reliant on any fucking artificial sweeteners like sucralose or aspartame, or you don't have to actually have full on fucking sugar in your diet. Hmm. Why can't I grow that on my allotment? Why can't the, I do that? That's uh, fucked it up. I can do hemlock though. Is it hemlock? Is that the, the shit that fucking you eat that and it, you, you know your brain comes out your arse? <laughs> <laughs> I, I might have got the plant wrong, but you see my fucking point. Do you know that kind of way? You can you, you can grow so many fucking poisons just willy nilly down down in the fucking in the allotment and no stevia and no cannabis well, because it's not about safety none of this has ever been about protecting the public it's about protecting profit and so it's the same reason you can't grow tobacco in the uk you know what i mean it's it's they've made it very difficult for you to be reliant on on anything they, they you think about it so someone like jeremy corbyn for example obviously he's a politician in the uk was constantly mocked uh, for having uh, his own allotment, you know, for, for growing his own food and for having that kind of ethos. You know, it was almost seen as, as, as not just anti-capitalist, but uh, almost anti-British. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And as, as, yeah. a, as a culture, we've always been self-sufficient. We've all been pocket farms. It's only in the past 30, 40, 50 years that this globalized um, food delivery system has been yeah. created. And again, if everyone can think of that big map that they've produced, which shows that they're only they're all owned by what twelve companies? Yeah, yeah, I, I'll get that image up. I'll get that image up in a second. But it, it's it's fucking it's fucking nuts when you think about it. Well, they How want you to be reliant on them, and so like my, it's this whole neoliberal policy type of policy making, and it's the same thing in Colorado. Um, when I was there, it was like we were able to get cannabis, um, even even uh, we. Through referendums, we got cannabis legalized through referendums, and immediately after, they started making laws to restrict it and to make it harder for small businesses to compete and to let the patients or, or anybody, you know, to grow less plants. Patients can grow less and less and less plants um, than what we originally put forth in the referendum, and it's just mind-boggling. <music> Apologies once again for that, folks. Uh, what can slowly, I say? Slowly getting there. What we're can speaking. I say? Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Forbes is wild. Forbes has been putting so much crap about cannabis, and it's all, it's all stuff praising businesses, and I don't see nothing about activism or anything like that. It's it's pretty sad to me, actually. Yeah, I think as you said earlier about being disillusioned. Um, I still share a lot, read a hell of a lot, obviously for the project that I'm trying to work on at the minute. And it does, it's the backhanded adverts in a lot of ways. It's it's sort of this, so the, the, the headline, obviously with clickbait uh, these days, have been this new discovery or this new product. And you go and you think, oh, wow, wow. And you, you read through it and it's still gains, gaining a lot of traction in the community because people share it based on just the headline alone. And so then this is still getting their message so that when we're looking at uh, your average panel, I mean, you'll probably experience the same thing I do. Some of the, the places that I've spoken and I've stood next to, and I'm like, I'm the only guy here that's not in a suit, and I'm probably one of the only people <laughs> that actually smokes cannabis. You know what I mean? And it's just that weird kind of like, they're looking at me like I'm a criminal and a druggie, and I'm like, no, I'm, I'm fighting here to stop me being a criminal druggie while you're fighting to, to perpetuate that because it protects your profits. It's, yeah, yeah. I mean, the big it thing is, that scares me that I think we're seeing around the world and the FDA in its entirety of history never approved any scheduled drug as a medical substance. They just didn't do it for so long. Then in the past, what, five years, they've approved four different narcotics for, um, for approval for, for medical license. These are all uh, what they're calling C, uh, CBMPs, cannabis-based medicinal products. So patented medicine. 
Um, I just wanted to get your, your thoughts on this because obviously you've been a, a man to produce raw oil and you always advocate sort of the whole plant and that people should have that sort of self-sufficiency. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on where where you think the industry sort of going and what your hopes would be that we as activists could kind of have as an effect um, on that in the future. The whole thing is, is kind of gross <laughs> to me. <laughs> I find myself saying this quite often, but it, it's repulsive to me. Um, I, I come from kind of the, the understanding that this is cannabis and it's a plant. And um, a lot of the people that I had seen in the, in the scene, you know, I had seen in the scene, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'd seen them in the industry and this kind of thing. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me take some water. No worries. I got a little sidetracked, but they, um, Oh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. What was I? So, uh, thoughts on cannabis-based medicinal products. You were saying that. Oh yeah, it's just that it's that I. It's hard for me to put this into words because I have never actually told anybody this. I guess is that um, cannabis to me, I see it as a plant. You know, I see it as cannabis. But everyone else I see in the industry is trying to market it as a product. Um, so you don't see anybody selling, merely selling cannabis oil or CBD oil or anything like that. It's always, you know, Steve's scientifically engineered with a scientist from Sweden who came into a laboratory and specially formulated this with something that nobody could ever do but Steve uh, and his scientist friend. And um, you're buying this special formulation that only Steve has, you know, and everyone is trying to do this. And it's just, it's gross to me because it's this cannabis and that's what it is. And putting the patents on it and trying to say like, oh, this is my formulation of cannabis. This is my specific one that nobody else could have done except me. And you can only get this formula for me. And this is, it's very, uh, it's egotistical. It's, it's maniacal, <laughs> frankly. It's, it's, um, it's the whole culture that, that we've kind of grown into. So when you're indoctrinated, you don't see it as being absurd. Exactly. You see it as being yeah. kind of normal. And so it's only when you step back and, you, and, and then people tell you about this kind of thing that's going on. You're like, what? <laughs> that's crazy to me. Um, and, and nobody nobody wants to fight for cannabis. You know, they all want to fight for their formula or their factory or their, you know, and it, and this goes into the whole thing, like you said, of patents and pharmaceutical companies making this. That's what big pharmaceutical has been doing. You know, big pharma has been doing to us for years. And now we see every single person in the industry doing the exact same thing. And that's why I have distanced myself you know, from it all. And I don't really, my only friends that I have, I have, I do have a worldwide network of friends and followers, but all my friends are activists. And, um, and I hear it's the same thing where, like you guys mentioned earlier, yeah. um, it's the same interests fighting and keeping these policies in place all around the world. It's not a, it's not really a different fight. It's very, it's a very unified fight, even though we feel um, compartmentalize or we feel, you know, fractured from it, we are together in it. And, and, and everyone, you know, with the media we have is, is feeding off it. Like you say, you know, you, someone in the UK, like yourself, hears about South Dakota re legalizing recreational cannabis or something like that. It's like, who cares about South Dakota? Like it's, it's a, can't even, get a, can't even get a 20 bag. Do you know that kind of way? So, <laughs> um, yeah. no, you, you're right, though, uh, and I I think, <clears throat> like, even though we are all in it together, it's 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 what going back to what 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 um simple was was alluding to with the Jeremy Corbyn thing, and and just something as simple as ridiculing somebody for being somewhat self sufficient is fucking bananas. But that's the level of uh, of attack. That is the level that they're willing to fucking cut the legs yeah. from under you. It doesn't matter even if you're fucking 
That, that lad's not growing cannabis. Do you know what I mean? He's growing fucking tomatoes and they still went for him because it goes against it. It goes against this sort of all globally connected capitalist mindset. And, you know, we, 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 all, we always say, you know, when people, globalism, people would say globalism. Now, funnily enough, I, I've sort of been itching to talk about this. When, when I heard about that first, that term, I was like, globalism? Hmm. No, keep in mind, I had no context. I just heard that term. I was, I had positive connotations. Oh, yeah, yeah, coming together, coming together. You know, maybe we can fucking finally start exploring the fucking galaxy as one fucking, you know, end, end world hunger and all of this. None of this is cliche. What I'm saying is all of this is a, is a decision. We can fucking do it. No mind 2050, 2030. We could do this in two fucking years if we really got a let yeah. out of our fucking yeah. arses. We can really do that. And to me, that's you know, like globalism. I, I'd always have that sort of ideal sense of globalism. Nobody can take that away from me. You can sully it with your fucking, <laughs> with, you know, your categorical fucking, um, uh, you know, boxing people off. And I love talking about that shit. But you know what I mean? If, if, if we end, if we all made that choice, yeah, to just to fucking sort everybody out, so everybody sound as fuck, just to generalize it, yeah. Can you imagine where we would be in twenty fifty? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We, uh, honest to fuck, we'd probably be. Uh, I don't know. We we we'd have evolved into some sort of higher sentient being, hopefully <laughs> at that point yeah. in time. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what the fuck. It's totally sad to me to think about it. I think about things like that in similar terms, where it's like. We're, as humanity, it should be us kind of fighting against nature and, you know, testing the limits of what we can and can't do. And instead, we're fighting against class class systems that have been in yeah. place since before medieval times, you know? No matter what it's called, capitalism or feudalism, it's it's very similar. And it's, uh, it's always the same thing, a, a, a small amount of people with concentrated wealth or power or whatever you want to call it. Um, ruling over a majority of others that they say they think they feel are too stupid um, yeah. to rule over themselves. And it's it's really a kind of psychopathic mentality. It and is. unfortunately, these people are controlling the media. And so a lot of the stuff we see is, is yellow journalism going on today. And it's yeah. their only way to fight back against the m- network we have now currently, our social networks, because people like myself can get information out worldwide, although it might be only to the activist portion or population of the community. People in pretty much every country see the message and and are able to then relay it themselves in their own language and in their own way to their own customs and their own laws um, and say, hey, look, what the powers that be aren't right. The powers that be are not looking out for us. The powers that be are not interested in in our best interests. They're interested in, in uh, usually the opposite. And um, so it's it's it is kind of a wild world, especially now the times we're living in. But it's it's nice to stay op- to stay focused and stay um, you know optimistic because yeah. um, because we are we are getting the message out and we are doing what we can. And so we can't dwell on all this sensationalist crap because that's what they want us to do essentially in the end. Yeah. Uh, there's an interesting um, sort of point here that I was thinking it's the old thing of legalization and decriminalization. It's the, the connotations of a word. So when people heard sort of the idea of globalism, unless you've already had some negative uh, connotation already implanted in you from something that you've absorbed, you would then hear that and go, yeah, exactly. That's us all working together and, and getting our shit together. The same with the person that isn't then too familiar with legalization once legalization of cannabis, but then they don't understand that yeah. legalization comes with more legal yeah. things that you can get arrested for, more laws that you can violate, more ways that, that it can still punish you and extract cash. Same with decriminalization. Again, that sounds like the ultimate win. And I think this is why it's so important to create content and have these dialogues i know you said about not good covering old ground in your in your show mike but i think it's sometimes we 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 need to say the same thing in a different way for the others to sort of hear it do you know what i mean in, in that 
yeah. we've, bec- we've become a shock and sensationalist world in, in we, a clickbait it'll get us some horrible car crash video or something like that these the algorithms of youtube and platforms like instagram and that have learned this so this is what they then show you with that ever-increasing cycle and i think we need to almost weaponize that same um indoctrinated uh, paradigm with our just replacing the information and just so the more that we can create of this kind of content the more we can saturate it i believe that the more likely we are um to start to hit newer ground i mean if you look at the youth these days most of them are aware that the idea of criminalizing any drug is is, is ridiculous it's just ridiculous unless they've been brought up quite conservative because of their sort of parents in the world they've been brought in but typically social media platforms are exactly most kids are curious most young people are curious they google and they will search and they will eventually regardless of shadow banning and the various uh, other things that we see against pages like ours they will still manage to get access to this information and yeah even sort of people that have heard it before i think would still benefit from um sort of hearing it again hearing it anew in a new way and because even the way we think of things from a few months ago are different now i mean even the, some of the topics we discussed me and Macca in the 0.5 episode i would maybe have a slightly different opinion on we were constantly evolving and changing creatures and i think that the people are living online more and more now so the best thing i think we can do as activists is to find a way to create that polished content and that that yeah that that end thing that can go viral but at the same time yeah. this but this you see, conversation but, you know but you see the other the other thing to take away right and this is a very important thing and we i before we even actually um <laughs> did a 0.5 episode we talked about this and but where where an awful lot of the stuff that you find yourself mass repeating for somebody that's new to this game right you got to take all of the effort away from um f- from their side of it or, or sorry, their their entry if that makes sense mm-hmm. right so stuff like doesn't cause psychosis blah 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 basic stuff here basic stuff here it needs to be right oh this is interesting the lads are all the way down the road and i feel so overwhelmed and intimidated that i'm just not going to fucking you know i'll support them yeah. but i'm just going to back off so if if everything is pre prepared there and obviously bite sized bite sized, we are in your fucking hand right there or you know on your phone. It fit it fits that screen there. Do you know what mm. I mean? Um, and it covers an awful lot of the stuff that we repeat, 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 repeat over and over and over again. And you have it nationally, contextually correct. So this doesn't just apply to the UK. Everywhere, right? And work from that point. You're already a leap. You know, you're already ahead of, yeah. ahead of the curve. Do you know what I mean? You, you've taken, you, you've, you've given somebody a helping hand and go, come here, come here, come on, come in and join the group instead of going. You need to learn all of these things before you can come yeah. up here. Do you know that kind of way? Um. Well, and all of all of that is is organization. That's all it is. And all the, we just need to fucking decide to do it. And you know that's 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 literally one tool right there. You can go right here, jump start. Let's get rolling. Sleeves up. Yeah, I don't know. It's just an idea. I don't fucking know. No, so I don't, Mike. You may be able. To, there's a thing in the UK. Um, I'm not going to name the the page actually, but there is a group in the UK for the admins of the various cannabis clubs and some of the uh, organisations in the UK. Do you know of anything internationally where? genuine activists as it were and i don't i don't mean to say that in a contentious way to anybody listening i mean let's say non-corporate activists you know people that are, are, are still living poor and to their ethic again i don't mean that to come across yeah, classist. Yeah. i'm saying this badly um but, share, you know, p- share p- 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 approach the share yeah they have that they have that common that common idea because i think that if we had that we probably already have that between us all in terms of the information and whatever it is just sort of standardizing it to a way exactly that it can be uh, uh digested by each each area i mean there's a there's a lot of different people and that they i'm friends with a lot of them but we don't talk often and um they kind of stay within their own circles so um you know you have activists that just make oil and they kind of stay friendly with each other you have activists who just go to the un and or the WHO and they kind of stay together. And then you have your South African activists and your Indonesian and your, mm-hmm. every country 
there really isn't a, kind of a unified network, which I think would be awesome. Yeah, let's fucking do it. We're going to put the gauntlet down right here and now. No, seriously, <laughs> right? If you are um, in a similar situation to us in the, in the UK on, and Ireland that are fighting, uh, you know, prohibition in the same vein, come fucking talk to us. I want to fucking hear what's going on. I want to hear what you're doing. Do you know that kind of way? Sorry, Simpa, I've just taken over that just there for a second. You're coming it's, on it's this not, fucking show it, right it, now. It, it's not like I'm going to deal with the inbox or anything from this. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. But, but, but no, I, I genuinely, I, I, I would second that. Um, I, I think that if we could sort of centralize, even if it is just for a start, I know obviously not everyone's on Facebook and I do hate the platform, but it is rather ubiquitous. Um, we could set up sort of a private group in there and just start, just introduce each other. Because I think there's something that you alluded to earlier, Mike, when you said we have the numbers. And you are correct. There are tens of millions of cannabis consumers around the world. And quite often, a lot of us will experience that same thing of sat alone somewhere, trying not to get caught smoking a joint and feeling just alone, like the whole world's against us. That brief moment of feeling like there's this just this uphill march constantly. And the same thing happens in the activist community. Good people burn out every day. And I think oh, having yeah. a space where we could sort of bolster each other and sort of help each other and offer tips and whatnot i think would be incredibly beneficial and help um create a space to galvanize and create others do you know what i mean and many hands make light work the more we can so i get everyone singing from the same hymn sheet we're not even singing from the same hymn sheet yeah, but yeah, just yeah. expressing the same kind of ethos just leave your ego at the door because as we've alluded to on this part. show <laughs> <laughs> you're preaching to the choir but <laughs> but uh it's the uh, it's ideal world we want to live in, but when you get a lot of people together, it's it's tough. Um, and you, so you just got to find the right people. Yeah, you know, the, they'll weed each other out. Wait, hey, wait, hey! <laughs> See what you did there. <laughs> <clears throat> well, yeah. Look, stick the fucking head out. Come and talk to us, for fuck's sake. Let's actually get something going. As I said, leave your ego at the door because it just makes things worse fuck ego yeah but i, I like it because again bringing us all together as you said creating those little bite-sized bits of content um because again we we all talk of it so dismissingly in half a sentence yeah ago, and all oh, psychosis is a myth that's been debunked whereas if you haven't been in the world that we've been in for the past several years and lived the lives that we've lived all you've ever heard is it causes psychosis it's yeah. this demon street weed and it's pretty... one thing i like to say is pretty nice that um since this happens, this happens quite frequently on my page. I have, you know, it reach reach over a million people every month. And usually on every post I put, someone will put, oh, but doesn't cannabis do this? You know, something, one of, one of the myths. Mm -hmm. And it used to be where I'd have to like say something. Yeah. But now it's like literally 50 people comment and say, no, 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 no. This is actually what it is. Here's the study, you know, yeah. and sometimes it deteriorates into name calling, but it's, yeah. it's, it's been pretty, pretty hilarious for me to watch. Sometimes. Um, I mean, all the time, pretty much <laughs> riddled. With it. That's where everybody goes. Because again, what we've talked about is your ego <laughs> feels hurt that somebody online doesn't agree with you, that you haven't met, that you have no idea who the fuck that they are. And yet somehow you managed to get into some argument and I've done it. I've fucking done it quite a few times. <laughs> Do you know that kind of way? But you know, I'm a lot better with it these times. But here's the thing. That if you don't think your ego is a problem, that, that's just a basic interaction. That doesn't even have to, you don't even have to take in cannabis into account. You can talk about anything, politics, and it just goes so fucking polar. It just goes yeah. one way or the other. It's fucking mad. It's just, yeah, ego, man. Yeah. <laughs> but I think in a lot of ways, that's unconscious behavior in most people. They don't it is. mean it. Those same people, if you follow them on Instagram, will have a very different life and worldview. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you then follow them on Twitter, again, it's, it's we, we, social media doesn't really, if we end up getting stuck in the gameplay of it, we compartmentalize our own personality to a point where we don't evolve and grow. All we do is try and nurture the bits that others like about us. So we become lost. And I think that's the same mechanism that happened in cannabis activism and within the businesses. A lot of the people I've spoken to that own quite successful brands and farms and whatever else all have the same sort of ethos of starting with this humble vision. And then very quickly, they get stuck in the capitalist gameplay. They get stuck within in, in that mental thinking and it affects every part of their life. And they get so lost to it. And they've, they've done up a, 
an opportunity to pause and, and reflect and go, holy shit, how did I get here? Yes, I'm a millionaire, but have I stayed true to my ethics? Do you know what I mean? When I was smoking with the guys in the park back when it was illegal, holding signs and shouting "fuck you" at the cops, <laughs> and now I'm hel- I'm helping using my business funds to fund the police to arrest young kids for smoking yeah. weed. <clears throat> no, I don't know, dude. There's a, there's a problem. There's a problem when you get into the air, like millionaire and billionaire, isn't it? Like, do you know what I mean? It's, it's just a fucking problem. Well, it just becomes protectionist oh, again. Oh, I th- it's capitalism. This is you know I always talk with Simpa about this. It's like. <laughs> Um, it, it capitalism kind of reinforces bad laws. It, it reinforces the 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 structure that that is. You know, it wants to avoid change. You know, yeah. they always say, "Oh, capitalism is so much about innovation." <laughs> but you open up, you know, an app for taxis, and it's like seven different taxis with slightly different logos that all do the exact same thing taxi apps or, or anything like a game or whatever you want to download it's like 50 different versions of the same game yeah with a slightly different logo and uh and so in this case like we were saying earlier when it comes to to cannabis it, it's it's the big businesses p- putting money into reform into fighting reform you know and this is this is capitalism this is what it is now you know i don't know if it was some mysterious magical thing back then that was super great but now it couldn't have been it couldn't have been i mean you have it in every sort of civilization you had you know somebody was always getting fucking stepped on and you can give whatever fucking name you want to right but if you're exploiting anybody it's the same you're just a fucking dickhead i was going to say something a lot worse there (laughs) (laughs) um yeah but you know i had to bite my tongue a small bit but you know what i mean it like you had it in the egyptians do you know what I mean? The slavery was there. Fucking hell. The exploitation through, dare I say it, through the monarchy. Oh, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, not, not, me. Not, 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 to, not to shit on you, but there is um, some very interesting studies that, that would discuss the, the, the culture that built the Egyptians less likely to be slaves in the sense that we would think of with yeah. ch- chains and whatever else. It was more of a feudal system of economic control well yeah yeah yeah. which is exactly what we've we've, yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, so so it's not a go on i was just gonna i say i was alluding to sort of sort of the stereotypical uh, educational side of things that would say that things are five thousand years old when an actual fact you know if you listen to anybody decent like graham hancock or the legend that is graham hancock um you know what i mean all of that's fucking bullshit it's much much older much much older so yeah, you know, I, I highly agree with you. Before you went off on one yeah. there, and you know, yeah. kind of... sorry, sorry, I was just uh, just, just just sort of cut a point. But my, yeah, the, I agree with the concept and the idea. It's I think what happened in in the eighties with Reaganomics, and we had Thatcher our side, and you Reagan yeah. yours, and obviously you had Nixon and everything. It just you had a succession of of individuals that slightly moved that line enough that the public didn't quite see what was going on, that they couldn't quite get their head around it, and there was so much. Like now, like today, the year we're living in, so much cultural change, so much upheaval, so much potential for for great social justice and change where we can actually uh, move forward as a species. Um, and the opposition that meets, it's that yin and yang almost. The harder we try to, to better our lives, the more we empower this system against us. And I think that it's, after I'm trying to live in a world where I don't blame people for kind of being a victim to their own ideology. It, we all get defensive of our own ideas and that that when our ego and, and through cognitive biases and dissonance, we will defend the crap out of something that we truly believe to be true without having ever questioned it because we have the herd behind us. We feel, no, everything's capitalism, so why would I need to question this? When I think capitalism potentially is an idea on paper with very strict rules attached so there isn't a dropout on the bottom and there's a cap on the top, which isn't technically socialism, it's just an adaptive form, I suppose. These two things are not mutually exclusive. Ultimately, it will be money has to exist to exchange goods and services, or some token has to exist in some way. Yeah. And the the, cap, the neoliberalistic capitalism they weaponized inflation, they weaponized um, interest rates against us. They managed to create these measures of control so that regardless of what we did with the whole, they still controlled it. And that's what they're doing with cannabis. They control who gets a fucking license. So then, what they do is that you buy in, you get the license, in, and then what they're doing now for uh, 
in, to be perceived to be inclusive is you then buy a black business or an LGBTQ cannabis business or whatever, and they come into your conglomerate and you offer them the wholesale through the licensing and you then get to have this appearance of being a boutique uh, industry that people want to support, but you're actually a giant conglomerate again behind the scenes. Almost auto compliant. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's it's in their nature. I can't blame them for wanting to defend their profit. It's it, it's imagine a dog. You train a dog. You're good boy, good boy every time, and then all of a sudden you change the behavior, the perceived behavior of the dog. He doesn't understand his ethics and philosophy. He's just been going and getting that goddamn ball, and now you tell him getting the ball is wrong. You're an idiot. He's thinking you're an idiot. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, they're a victim to it in a lot of ways as well. But it's trying to figure out how to have these rational conversations that aren't so polarizing that don't uh, uh, devolve into ad hominem attacks and people calling each other dickheads and whatever else, you know? Yeah. But you know, I stand by it. If you were going to exploit people, you're a dickhead. I no, I, 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 I wasn't referencing you in that comment there, brother. But I'm, yeah, just, I, I'm just joking. I was just uh, like, uh, yeah, just no, 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 opportunist. That was funny. I, I had to do it, <laughs> but, but no, I know. I understand what you're saying. Um, what I am, for me personally, just before anybody goes down my throat uh, over it, is I'm talking about people that are conscien- consciously, consciously fucking exploiting people, consciously fucking making, what was it, a trillion, was it a trillion dollars in the first fucking half of this year? I wonder who I could be talking about there. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, that's fucking nuts. You're telling me you haven't exploited people. You're telling me that guy's not a dickhead. He is. He's a dickhead. <laughs> but, you know. Well, it's funny, too, because Simpa says we need some uh, currency to exchange, something to exchange. Yeah, well, hey, I got an idea for you guys. Have you heard about growing cannabis? <laughs> <laughs> yep. H- holds its value, guys. It's protected against inflation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is a solid, solid commodity. There's, there's a finite amount of gold, but we can grow all the weed in the world. <laughs> yeah, you can exchange yeah. it pretty much anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can always have, With, you know, resource-based economies too. You know, like I mean, you still have the token, like you, like you said, but it, you know, the mentality definitely has to change as well as you know, like I, I hit on something. I think it was a couple of podcasts ago about national self-sufficiency that you could base a model around cannabis. But I mean, you could, if you think about it. There's an awful lot. You shouldn't be, uh, uh, I think, was it yourself that said it? You shouldn't be fi- uh, shipping things in from fucking Vietnam when you can grow them down the road. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's fucking bananas. All of that, that has to stop. That has to stop. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have any any sort of currency. That's fucking crazy. But that mentality, <laughs> that ego, ego-driven ego capitalist mentality needs to die a death. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Simpa. <laughs> This no, is, this I, is no, the Maca life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Coming soon. Um, no, I, I, I completely, completely agree with you, brother. Um, in terms of sort of talking, maybe this sort of poor language, there's always in some form of an exchange, because unless we live in a truly abundant society, and unfortunately, the things that we have made important as a culture, the things that we have become either psychologically, physically, or, or culturally addicted to, are finite. Whereas the resources that cannabis can give us in terms of effectively infinite energy production and storage, uh, the replacement of all fossil fuels, you know, removing uh, BPAs, BPZs from plastics. Um, if we could move towards some, something like that, then the act of saving ourselves would become economically viable. Do you know what I mean? If we could, if we could make it instead of disaster capitalism, so every time that there's a fucking a crash in the market, Oh, we lost a trillion on the stock market. Yeah, but you dudes ended up with a trillion in on that island. You know what I mean? It's it's we can get beyond beyond that. We could have. Yeah. Um, I mean, what does Trev like to say? Trev Coleman says cannabis is a socialist resource. Uh, no, a, a capitalist resource with a socialist agenda. <laughs> so the even the proliferation of cannabis. Look at everywhere we've seen where they've had reform of cannabis. Now they're starting to have questions about. Well, do we really need as much law enforcement? What should prison reform look like? You know, should we help homeless people? Should we decriminalize other drugs? These conversations come off the back of cannabis. You know what I mean? It's it's yeah. to, to yeah, actually what, Washington DC just decriminalized uh, is in the District of Columbia just decriminalized um, psychedelics as well, natural psychedelics. So one could only hope that if they've been smoking up for the past couple of years, that they might indulge in some mushrooms as well. They might see a bit more progressive policy making. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but, yeah. like fucking hell. I laughed there when you said, should we help homeless people? What I know, it shouldn't even be. Fucking absurd. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's not, it's not even a question. It's not a question. 
and people yeah. yeah but you're right though you're right to mention it it's oh I, that tickled me in the yeah. you know yeah. but not, can you see why we're not if if we're having conversations about whether another human being deserves to not die cold and alone and hungry on the street why we're we not having a conversation about whether we have the human right to to take a substance that helps us better connect with with nature with humanity with ourselves you know what I mean? Yeah. Why Why would they ever want to empower the individual? That's just another potential threat to the system. <laughs> Fight yeah. power. Free thinkers. <laughs> yeah, but again, it's there, there have been a war with cannabis for, well, well over 100 years, actually, if you look at various countries for sort of putting taxes and bans and whatnot on it. And it's never been more popular. It's never been more known. Everybody can knows the smell of weed and can identify it. It's so ubiquitous. It's, it's one phone call away in every city and country in the world. Do you know what I mean? So as a consequence of that, it is affecting our culture. It is affecting it. I mean, look at uh, Ed Sheeran and Stormzy had a number one hit, which was basically about them rolling a joint at a party. You, you know what I mean? And they kept the lyrics on the radio version w- with them lighting up. You know what I mean? We're really? starting to see these, these, these changes. You've got every, I don't want to say has been, that's a, a terrible way of saying it, every... <laughs> um, sort of celebrity and person that was involved in some form of cannabis culture over the past 50 years now looking to, to brandize and somehow cash in on that, you, you know? And that then means they bring their following with them. You know, when someone like Oprah talks about weed, all the people that watch Oprah that are previously like, sort of drugs are bad are going, oh, well, if Oprah thinks this isn't the worst thing, mm-hmm. and it, it starts to open those doors. So I think that we're going to win either way, ultimately, even if we end up with ubiquitous Canadian model across the world, me and people, me and Mike ain't ever going to stop. The people that, that actually choose to to watch our stuff, engage with our content, support us, and have these conversations and fight in the way that they do wherever they are, they're never going to stop. If we we all have this this vision, and we've had this vision because I believe it to actually be the future, we just have yet to get there. And that is that this plant is truly free. And by doing that, it basically solves all the other problems i'm sorry it just does once we get to a global mental state where cannabis can be truly ubiquitously legal and there is no crime against it it can be accessible and you can do what you want with it we'll have already dealt with the idea of homelessness we'll have already dealt with the idea of wealth inequality of yeah, universal probably. basic income and all this other shit do you know what i mean yeah. so if we continue to fight for that seemingly never-ending end point along the way we solve those issues or at least we drag enough motherfuckers into our wake that they get wet very, very did well. You see what I did there? Did you yes, see what I did there? Yes, he did. He brought it back to the start. <laughs> <laughs> Clever boy. Um, yeah. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, um, what? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, lad. No, it's just, this has been a really good. I've really enjoyed this. We've, we've covered quite Different. A, 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 a yeah, diverse, diverse subjects. Um, one thing I did want to sort of touch on that again is something we've been I've been asking most of the cannabis-based guests. Uh, this isn't the question you think it is, Mike. Ah. Uh, it's something we've discussed quite a bit, uh, Mike. I think we discussed actually on the panel at uh, the Durham Expo as well. Uh, legalization versus decriminalization. I hate both terms, but it allows for a good sort of conversation. Do you, do you think one is going to win out or do you think that the kind of unnamed idea that you and I have has potential mm-hmm. in the long term? <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the one that's talked about in the mainstream a lot because uh, that's what they want. Um, you know, kind of concurrent with what we've been talking about today, how it's all tied in. Um, We find that the media frames certain issues for us in a way that makes it so everybody should know about these issues and have a stance on it. And they're typically pretty polarizing issues. Um, And so legalization and decriminalization kind of falls into this kind of category where it's like either one comes with some heavy consequences um, for the user um, in the long run. Um, you know, your typical white male or female <clears throat> necessarily won't have any problems after legalization or decriminalization. But after one of those happens, at least in the United States, you know, you'll have, you can have African American, Hispanic, um, people who aren't white being harassed at an even higher rate than they are now. Um, and continue to be arrested for cannabis possession or use or anything regarding cannabis, even after this legalization or decriminalization happens. And so I do like what you mentioned earlier with the seed, our future, uh, seed the future, 
Tito um, Future. Yeah. Tito Future is um, is attacking these old archaic laws. I mean, we find we find in almost every aspect of our life. I think that most of the laws that run our lives today were written by people who are dead. So it's like somehow dead people somehow know what's best for us, right. which I find is kind of kind of absurd. Um, and uh, so uh, when it comes to cannabis, on every single post that I make on Facebook, which is my bread and butter where I devote most of my time into educating the public, I put on there a hashtag of repeal prohibition. It's the only hashtag I put on my posts, repeal prohibition. I put it on every single post. I've been doing it for the last four years since I started the page. Um, and it's this, this, this concept of we don't need new laws that are going to have flaws. We don't need flawed laws. <laughs> Need to repeal these old archaic ones, these ones that um, that are were forget they were created during a time when we know now a campaign of of reefer madness propaganda was going on most of the time. So yeah. they shouldn't be allowed to exist. Um, and I feel that these this is where we need to focus our time and. Um, and our energy is to getting these laws taken off the books because we don't need new ones. We really don't. We just need these old ones taken off so they could stop prosecuting us and persecuting us and, and you know, arresting us and beating us and separating us from our families and taking everything we own, um, you know, ruining our careers and having our names dragged through the mud, um, you know, whenever they want. We need to end this this policy of, of policing us because it's it's based on 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 lies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, completely, completely agree. I mean, <laughs> I've I've often used um, possible. I don't know. I'm sort of repeal prohibition seems like a, a much better universal hashtag I actually use. I've, I've often or for many years used re-legalize. Um, but actually, that's probably quite antiquated in the way that I'm thinking of the terminology, um, because what I mean to that is exactly what you mean by go back to prior to before the laws are, because if we put new laws on top of this legislation that was based entirely on racism, entirely on um, controlling and allowing certain industries to, to be profitable and to, yeah. to um, corner certain markets, and then they, they just kept adding crap after crap after crap till this thing mutated, and then the people in power didn't even know what the hell it was. I mean, fucking Harry J. Anslinger, the, the father of modern prohibition, he's recorded as saying in the 20s that cannabis wasn't a problem. That to him, it was a benign thing. There was no goddamn reason. It wasn't until they threatened his job, until the, the drug agency that would predated uh, the uh, DEA, oh, dear. Um, the, yeah, before they turned, uh, were created, they were going to close this federal agency, and they then changed it around. And <laughs> The other day, uh, I can't remember which sort of region it was, but there's an interpretation of the legislation that says that you're allowed to consume cannabis in your own home, and the legal interpretation of own home is a home that you own. So if you you are renting a house, it's not up to you whether you can consume cannabis in it. It's down to the landlord and the owner of the property. Mm. So there's then still no social consumption. You're not allowed to consume really. Well, California has certain spaces where you can. But it's still sort of frowned upon, especially if you're, of, as you said, the wrong or perceived wrong ethnicity or social group. So you would still risk being targeted. Then it means you're then targeting your own home under legalization. Decriminalization, as I've spoke of many times before, does nothing for supply or regulation. Obviously, with cannabis, it works well because you can you cultivate your own. But then if they don't decriminalize cultivation, you can still be targeted for being self-sufficient or you're then forced to prop up a potential criminal marketplace. Yeah. So both, but yeah, both of the, these things. Um, don't work and i agree it is entirely a product of the same machine that has created the propaganda to create the, there is only two options pick pick it pick one you can you can have either of these when in actuality we we have a real opportunity i believe i mean the the, the legislation as it stands under the 61 and the 88 convention in the under the united nations 
is fraudulent. There is no foundational evidence, there is no basis, and there has been no update to it. If you look at the research done by Israel, America, Canada, Australia, the UK, Ooh. to name but a few, Germany, it, this, this dwarfs anything that was presented by the World Health Organization. It was all entirely circumstantial. It was all racist and biased, written um, with prejudice mm -hmm. and spite in mind. There was, there was never anything scientific based for this. So I think that's the unifying consensus that if we do, uh, Maka, if you're listening, since you've roped me into this job, um, if we do manage to create a space for activists to sort of unify in, that's the thing that we should really push because every single country uh, is 190 something that are actually signed up to that convention. So by doing that, when that country is then profiting from it, from a tax system where they're selling CBD or hemp or whatever, they're still in violation of that treaty. So it, that hypocrisy needs to be brought to the attention. Oh, you were back. It's just about ring you. Fuck me. All right. <laughs> wait, well, wait, my internet's well, clapping out. I'd say, you know what? That's, that's, that's... that's all right. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll do some wrap up now. If you, is it being recording <laughs> between? Yeah. You're just going to see me getting fucking annoyed. <laughs> Which is that's great. Right. We can do it as a promo video. Why is Maka fucking pulling the sides of his hair out? <laughs> What's bugging Maka this week? Well, yeah, we'll make you into a gif. Fuck me. Uh, <laughs> all right, then we'll we'll do the, the final lighthearted question that we've been doing at the end of the podcast. Um, so 2020 has been an unprecedented, unpredictable, and unreal year in a lot of ways. Um, so could you tell sort of our listeners and viewers something good that's happening to you in 2020? Spread a bit of positivity to the uh, to the people. I don't know. I found I found it actually kind of predictable um, this year. I <laughs> I graduated with a film degree, you know. So I I went to school specifically to study radio, television, and film in university. And I took quite a bit of courses on media manipulation and this type of thing. And in my own free time, I read every book from Noam Chomsky that I could, um, you know, and, and others, but he's, he's the most popular one. And, um, and if you can, if you, if you have this certain eye that's trained to see through the message, you can read an article or uh, see a, a piece of news, what they call news yeah. on, on the TV. And you can kind of know what's what's really going on behind the scenes and, and what's really the motivation for why they're doing this. And so this year has been a positive one for me in the usual sense, but not in the kind of sense that everyone's thinking like oh you know i had a ton of events planned and concerts planned and i was going to go to these and now i can't and so my year is ruined if i think about it that way you know it's, it's you know you can't be dwelling on stuff like that but um when when you can kind of see your surroundings are changing and learn to adapt to them um you can kind of really get through anything um really anything that, that they can throw at you um, as long as you're healthy, you know, and that, that's yeah. a big thing why I'm thankful for cannabis. Cannabis helps keep me healthy. Um, so 2020 has been an amazing year for me. I mean, I, I'm currently ranked seventh um, in the world as wake skating. So we had, you know, they changed to online format of competitions where I had to record the videos at my local cable park, wherever I was, and then submit it online. Um, so I guess, you know, my message is not necessarily, I don't even want to focus it on myself. Is this that it's this that this to stay positive in general, you know, is to this make small short term goals, focus on them, achievable goals, celebrate them, you know, when you reach them. Um, and don't let the words of others or the media or you know, don't try not to let negativity enter into you. Oh, I know it's it's hard to do because there's so many sources saying, oh, I need to look this way and I need to buy this and I need to keep up with my neighbors and have better things than they do. Um, 
And so just kind of step back and, and focus on what's really important, you know, in your real life, not what the TV is telling you what's important, not what people on your Facebook or your Instagram are telling you what's important. Um, take a step back when you can and just find out what's really important to you and what really makes you happy and try to focus some time on that every day if you can. All right, he's back. Hello. We were looking for you under the desk, but apparently... <laughs> I see. I think I need to show myself out, to be honest. Uh, like, <laughs> I highly blame the internet here, so fuck you. Fuck that's, all, that's all right. It's all right. It wasn't your fault this time. We will put up a nice little uh, thing at the bottom with a few asterisks. I can only apologize Not to fault. Mike. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. You're gonna. Do you know what? You're gonna. Cool. It just means you're gonna have to come on again. Cool. Yep. That's yeah. good with me. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Part no. two in two hours. Double uh, <laughs> uh, So yeah, again. Now that we're back, we'll quickly get this. Hopefully, before Mac's internet decides to kill itself again. Wrap it up. Um, Wrap it up, we're, mate. We're, we're wrapping. We're speed wrapping like a Christmas wrapping competition. Um, that was a crap analogy, but Doesn't put something nice totally. in your head to think about for a minute there, guys. Um, so, <laughs> waving us on. Go, go, go. <laughs> we're jumping out of a chopper here. Um, so, yeah, just again, thank you very much to, to Mike Wise. Check out the Mike Wise show. Uh, we will be linking Mike's uh, social media below. We will also be linking both of Mike's film, uh, Rick and Me and uh, Legally Alive. Uh, please do check them out. They're both free and available on YouTube now. Uh, you can also help uh, support Mike. Your, you've got a Patreon as well, don't you? I do, but I don't really use it. Well, we'll just still... share my post. Share oh. my post on Facebook. Oh, there you go, and, guys. Uh, yeah, that's what really helps because you know you share, and you know I've gotten so frustrated at people for not doing this online because they'll take my video and then re-upload it, and it's not the same thing, you know. And I hate to harp on this, but it's like when you re-share something from my page, then someone sees it from your page and they might share it, you know, and then some friend that has never liked your page or liked my page will see it and maybe we'll like the page now all of a sudden and then we have someone else who will then share the new video later and then the same thing will happen and it's the only way that i have to reach new people i do everything organically um so the only way i get the message out there is by is by share so just share and that's all i ask for <laughs> there you go perfect share 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 folks um do check out uh you can now get us on spotify we are available on apple google podcast podcast addict anchor and several other platforms that i can't think of off the top leave of my head guys <laughs> there you go leave a review that'll help bump us up in the analytics just engagement seriously guys if you've enjoyed this show if you enjoyed mike's work my work any activist any form of activism really anything you believe in like share uh, especially save their content as well, reshare, always tag them in stuff and just help to build that wider base of knowledge. The more informed we are, the more smart decisions we can make and the quicker we can actually get a consensus on what the hell to do, how we do it, and then what we're actually going to do when this war's over. So mm -hmm. as always, thanks for tuning in, folks. We will see you for episode six in a week. Bye. Peace and love.